Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I talked about the denial of service attack we blocked over the weekend after allowing some of the related traffic again. The attack came back with a small modification. The user agents are now randomized, so maybe someone read what I wrote about it yesterday. This time the attack didn't cause any effects on the site and a new block is locking it out for now, but it continues at the about the level we have seen uh, before. I looked a little bit closer at some of the networks participating in these attacks and while the data isn't uh, fully conclusive, there's a lot of noise here. So not really sure if I should call this a significant signal. The uh, common uh, low level vulnerabilities that are being uh, scanned for by bots are also being scanned by the networks that are hitting us here as part of the denial of service attacks. And it has been sort of increasing a tiny little bit, I think, over the last couple of days. Now, given that all of this comes from China, it may be related to hacktivists, for example, trying to find some sites to deface or maybe denial of service attacks uh, in relation to the US Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, visiting uh, Taiwan. There have been other reports of sort of similar level of denial of service attacks as we have seen them. Nothing that you would commonly consider sort of a nation state attack, but more something that hacktivists are capable of. Let me know if you see anything uh, similar, any sort of changes in some of that uh, background uh, scanning, uh, in particular when it comes to some of these Chinese uh, mobile and home user IP address ranges. And a Soho password manager pro vulnerability that was patched back in June, CVE 2022 35405 now has an exploit publicly available. The vulnerability does allow for remote code execution via an XML RPC API. The vulnerability looks like sort of your very typical deserialization issue, but uh, if you're running Soho Password Manager, this is sort of your last chance to patch. I've not seen any attempts in our honeypot yet, but then again, our honeypots do not really emulate this password manager. So target attacks may already be happening. And here targeted just means someone going through the trouble to make sure that uh, this particular software is actually exposed. And VMware released a new update for its Workspace ONE and Identity Manager products, including a couple others. The update fixes a number of different vulnerabilities. VMware considers the update critical and rightfully so. It fixes, for example, an authentication bypass, a remote code execution vulnerability, SQL injection, local privilege escalation, cross-site scripting, and I haven't double-checked, but this sort of may have hit all the OWASP top 10 in one update. A researcher who notified VMware of the unauthenticated remote code execution vulnerability, so that's the real critical one, posted screenshots on Twitter showing a working exploit. And this researcher also promised the release of a proof of concept soon and also a technical write-up describing the details of this vulnerability. So this certainly makes this kind of a patch now vulnerability because who knows how long, probably only days until this exploit is released. And then of course, uh, we'll see scanning for it. And Cobalt Strike has been the tool of choice for attackers to set up command and control channels. But you probably noticed that there is a lot of guidance for defenders about how to detect a Cobalt Strike. So it's no surprise that attackers are looking for alternatives. Also, of course, for free alternatives. 
the Cisco Talus research team ran into one possible successor here of Cobalt Strike when investigating an attack against an organization related to Tibet. In the past, we have often seen attacks that are targeting organizations related to Tibet, kind of being used sort of as a testing ground for new tools. The tool apparently calls itself Majuska, if I or Majusaka, if I pronounce this correctly. It's based on a a Chinese uh, word and a uh, couple more details about the tool can be found in the Cisco Talus blog. Apparently it is available for free and written in Rust and Go. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.